of you like great testimonies? None of you. Well, I love testimonies because it shows that God is alive. And uh, we have a very special couple here tonight. Never briefed them. They're in Port Elizabeth. And uh, they had a little incident. Short and sweet, please. Pastors from our church in Port Elizabeth. So Pastor Sam and Sari Honeyball. Let's welcome them to the platform quickly. Give me another microphone up here quick, quick, quick. As we get ready to hear some good news here tonight of what God is doing. Amen. Because whatever the devil plans for your destruction, God will turn around for your blessing. What was meant to harm you, God will use to bless you. You are not going under, you are going over. Come here, Mr. Soundman. Listen, I want to get the sound right by the time I preach. Because I have one of the most critical messages to preach. I believe to set the launching pad for Dream Week here tonight. And don't mind John, I love him. But we always change everything before Dream Week. So uh, we want to get it right. I know my doll. I was born, I sleep at night. I was born on a Monday. This is a like me, I believe. See, when the young men are like as of a hark and a slug it. Because a seer tear mark is not a mirror. Is it any blay with the evangelini? Deep blay a boot scop. Niemand it seer. Lemuna eat gedeel van aand nie. Ek mors nie tyd nie, geloof my. Ek is bezig. Sal nou oorskakel na Engelse stasie vir die televisie. Halleluja. Prijs God op die spot. Halleluja. I am excited. I'm, so, I'm, I'm excited. I am excited. For Dream Week. Amen. Okay, tell us what happened quickly. Kort now, I believe. Nee, hy gaan nie vertel nie, jy gaan sê. Nee, hy kan sê, you can start, she can finish. Right, you Genesis, she's Revelation. I just want to say, we just moved into a new house in Port Elizabeth. And uh, it's going to sound very spiritual. We're sitting in, in my office praying half past four in the morning. Um, after we talked about an hour or two, because moving into a new house, everything is, is you know, all the curtains is not up and everything. And uh, as we finished uh, praying, the very next moment she went, uh, stood up to go and get some coffee. When she opened up the corridor's door, there was three uh, muggers coming in with balaclava caps over and, and knives. And the one came into the office and held me against the wall. And then she went into the, the corridor and I'm going to give over to her because I didn't see what happened there. Actually, we were crying out to Jesus. That's what we did. My husband, I heard him say, pardon? Yes, yes, that's what I did. I said, he, Jesus, Jesus, because the Bible says we should call on the name of our Lord in a time of trouble. And that's what we did. My husband was saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and, and, and they were really, uh, the next moment, uh, well, I, I should say that the guy that was holding him with a knife was saying, what is this Jesus? Shut up, shut up. <laughs> and then the other two was dancing like this around me and bumping onto me. And then our son came out of the, um, in the corridor, out of his uh, room because he thought, what is now, what is this And they thought happening? it was Jesus. That's what we think, because they were pandemonium. And in, what they did was they ran into the kitchen and started to throw me with the uh, gem squashes. And it was like mi mi missiles. I had a um, blue face for more than a week. But it was, they were really, they were um, in the enemy's camp. They were really confused, confusion in the enemy's camp. Three minutes later, they take, took what they wanted. But we were all quiet in our house, and we were protected, and nothing bad happened. And fear came. Fear came a little. We were very unsettled, or I was, the next evening. And God came and gave me this verse when I was not looking for it. And it's in Proverbs 3. <laughs> um, and it says, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. And when you lie down, yes, when you, you will lie down, you, um, and your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, 
not of trouble from the wicked uh, when it comes for the Lord will be your confidence. And that's what I wanted to hear. He's my confidence. Come on, the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. What was meant for evil? God will turn around for our good. Come on, give him a bit of praise in there tonight in the house. Hallelujah. Come on, something good is going to happen in this place tonight in this holiday. Something good. God's got your number. No matter what the enemy has planned against you, God has a better plan for you. What is meant to harm you will not harm you. What is meant to destroy you will make you stronger. Amen. The fire cannot touch you. You will be purged by the fire. But you will come out stronger on the other side. Hallelujah. I want to prepare our hearts tonight for Dream Week. And I want to talk tonight, as I started this morning, on the gift of righteousness. Maybe one of the most important revelations you can have as a Christian. Because if you don't understand your righteousness, you will not know how to receive from God. And I don't know about you, but I I need some things from God. Come on. I need to receive some. I'm believing God for some big things this week. Amen. Not only for myself, but for other people. I'm believing God that from the throne of grace, many things are going to flow during this week. So I'm not going to come as a preacher. I'm coming as a receiver. I'm, I've got my, my antenna up. I'm expecting good things. Amen. How's the sound out there? Is it fine, Clive? You, you, you hear me well. Okay. So tonight, my aim is to set our hearts right as I started this morning. Because the Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, If your heart does not condemn you, then you have confidence before God. But if your heart condemns you, you have no confidence. So we have to set our hearts right before God. We have to get rid of all guilt, all condemnation, all accusations, all lies, so that we can have open hearts and open spirits to receive everything that God has for us. The essence of the gospel, as I said this morning, is to believe in the forgiveness of our sins. Jesus paid the price for all our sin. The blood of Jesus speaks on our behalf tonight. Mercy and not judgment. He has forgiven you all your sin. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Psalm 103, verse 1, 2, and 3. He forgives all my iniquities. He heals all my diseases. Say it this evening. Say, He forgives all my sins. Come on, I want to feel you because you need to be a preacher tonight. I'm going to show you tonight that you are a preacher of the gospel. Okay? He forgives all my sin. My past, my present, and my future sin. He forgives all my sin. He heals all my diseases. Say it tonight. Say, He heals all my diseases. Hallelujah. I want you to know tonight there is not a sickness he cannot heal. There's not a disease he cannot heal. There's not a mountain he cannot move. He still is the great I am. He still is the Lord, my sanctifier. The Lord, my redeemer. The Lord, my healer. The Lord, my peace. The Lord, my righteousness. The Lord, my banner. He still is the same today as he was yesterday. There is nothing impossible with him. But how come there are so many people that don't receive from God? When the time comes to receive, so many people just cannot receive the blessing of God. So many people stumble when the enemy attacks them. Because their hearts are not set the way God wants their hearts to be set. The devil judges them, or the devil devil condemns them, or they are bound by some thought of something that happened many years ago. When people go through difficult times, they believe God is judging them. Some people believe God is punishing people today. Baie mens in die Afrikaans gebruik die woord tuchtig en sê die Heere tuchtig ons dier elende en tuchtig ons dier siekte en tuchtig ons, tuchtig ons dier verderf en verdriet. Nee! God is a good God. The Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 13, let no one say when he is going through a trial test or tribulation that God is putting him through that trial test or tribulation. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither does God tempt every, anyone with evil. Verse 17 says, every good and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. So good things come from God. Say it tonight, good things come from God. Say it. Say only good things come from God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Say, I am blessed because of Jesus. Say it tonight. Say, good things are heading my way. Jy moet het glo vanavond. Sê dit weer. Sê, goeie dinge. Al as jy nou Engels man, praat bykie Afrikaans. Die Engelse taal. Sê bykie, goeie dinge. As op pad na my toe. In Jesus' naam. Glo jy dit vanavond. Well, forgiveness is a good thing. 
Healing is a good thing. Financial prosperity is a good thing. Peace with God is a good thing. He satisfies my mouth with good things. Sickness is not a good thing. Condemnation is not a good thing. Fear is not a good thing. Lack is not a good thing. God wants you blessed. As a matter of fact, God wants you very, very, very blessed. God wants you extravagantly blessed. God wants you exceedingly blessed. God wants you abundantly blessed. God wants you over the top blessed. God wants you to be the head and not the tail. God wants you to be the envy of the world out there. Can you say a good amen tonight in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. Say it again. Say good things are heading my way in Jesus' name. In Romans 5 verse 8, the Bible says, God demonstrated His love towards us that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. So when you were the furthest away from God, Jesus died for you. In John 3, 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So let's establish this fact tonight, and that is that God loves you. There is nothing you can do that will make God stop loving you. God will not love you more if you live a perfect life. God loves you because of Jesus Christ. You are accepted not because of you. God blesses you not because of you. Sometimes people go through things and they say, well, I don't deserve this. Well, who does? No human being des deserves to go through pain and suffering. Pain and suffering is never the plan or the will of God for your life. Goodness and mercy is. Life is, peace is, happiness is. So when you're going through a tough time, the last thing you want is for your heart to begin to condemn you. It's for your heart to tell you, I brought this upon myself. I prayed for a man this week in the hospital and I spoke to him in Afrikaans. I'll stay in English tonight so we don't have to edit the whole program off television. Amen. And I spoke to him about healing the will of God. And he sat and he just looked at me and I realized that he wasn't quite believing or getting what I was saying. He was desperate, but he didn't believe. I said to him, sir, healing is the will of God. He felt that God was punishing him because of something he did. What a terrible burden to believe that God, God who is love, God who is mercy, God who is your father, is punishing you with some severe sickness or some severe disease. Yet people go around in the name of the Lord and they say, well, the Lord is judging you. Or the Lord has brought this upon you, so you're, you. What a terrible burden to bear. As if sickness is not enough. People struggle before the throne of grace. Not really believing that God wants them to be whole. Because their hearts have never been established in righteousness. You know, sometimes when you, when you walk in... A world where people have minds renewed. You forget actually how the majority of people think out there. How so many people out there still have a certain belief and a certain doctrine. As a matter of fact, the majority of people out there that sin or sickness is a result of sin. That when things go wrong in our lives, we must have opened a door somewhere. Or it must be a generational curse. I spoke to somebody recently, a charismatic person, who said to me, somebody struggling with sickness saying, well, you know, that person must have opened a door somewhere. That person must have done something wrong. <laughs> well, you doing things right will not get God's approval. Listen again. God doesn't love you because of you. God doesn't bless you because of you. You are not qualified for the grace of God because of you. Now get this. God loves you because of Jesus. You are qualified because of Jesus. That's why you cannot one day be blessed and the next day be cursed. You cannot one day be righteous and the next day be less righteous. Because when God sees you, He sees you through the eternal offering of His Son. He doesn't see Pastor Leon. He doesn't see Stella Marie. He sees Jesus when He sees you. He sees the offering of Jesus. He sees the blood of Jesus. We're going to talk about that. He sees the new nature that you have. He sees righteousness. Not you kick the cat in the dark. Not a God who says, I know who you are. I saw what you did. 
Not a God who loves conditionally as people do. Not a God who loves up to a point. Not a God who loves when you deserve it. Not a God who loves you have to earn it. But while you were a sinner, while you were the furthest away from God, when you least deserved it, God demonstrated His love. God demonstrated His love by sending His Son, Jesus Christ. Come on, say a good amen and give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, give Him a better praise offering than that. So if we are going to receive our healing and our deliverance and our forgiveness, we have to understand our righteousness in Christ Jesus. We have to understand what Jesus did for us. We have to establish our hearts in righteousness. So let's read. Are you ready? Romans chapter 1 verse 16 and 17. The Bible says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. For everyone who believes, say tonight, say, I believe the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is good news. Say, I believe the gospel. The gospel is good news. If it sounds too good to be true, you are hearing the gospel. <laughs> Say, well, well that, doesn't, that doesn't sound right. It can't be so easy. There has to be a price for sin. You, know, you have to feel bad. I have to carry this burden a little bit. The Bible says the gospel is the power. The word power is dunamis. The gospel. The gospel meaning good news. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The word salvation is the Greek word sortiria, which means wholeness, completion for your spirit, your soul, and your body. So the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Wholeness, completion for your spirit, your soul, and your body. For everyone who believes. Who believes what? The gospel. The gospel of what? The gospel of Jesus Christ. And this gospel is what? It's not about the sin of man. It's about the righteousness of God. The Bible says, For therein the righteousness of God is revealed. The just shall live by faith. In the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. We want to point out people's sin. God doesn't. God points out Jesus' righteousness. We want to talk about our failures and our flaws. God doesn't. God talks about His Son. Hallelujah. God talks about the remedy. Hallelujah. God talks about the cross. He doesn't talk about the law because the law points out your sin. But the grace of Jesus Christ is the remedy of your sin. So the Bible says in verse 17, for in it, in what? In the gospel. So what is the gospel about? The gospel is about the righteousness of God from faith to faith. From faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Faith in what? Faith in the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone who believes what? Believes the gospel. The gospel is a revelation of what? Not the sin of man, but the righteousness of God. The gospel declares you have a new identity. The gospel reveals who you are in Christ Jesus. The gospel reveals the love of God. The gospel reveals your forgiveness of sin. The gospel reveals your completion in Christ. The gospel, come on, say, I am forgiven. Hallelujah. Because of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So your wholeness, your well-being is rooted in your righteousness. Righteousness meaning in right standing with God. Come here quickly, Kobus. In right standing with God. In right standing with God. Many people think God has turned Himself away from us. We grew up believing that sin separates us from God. That if you do something wrong, God turns away from you. And that, you know, when you approach God, you have to approach God like a, like a, like a worm. Unworthy. We've even been taught we're not worthy. We never were, and we never will be worthy. But we can approach the throne of grace, not because of us, but because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We can come to a loving Father because of what God did. The gospel reveals what God did. The gospel talks about what the Father did. That's why we can come to the Father. A Father who does not scorn at us. A Father who does not fold His arms. Fold your arms. A Father who does not stand with a club. But a father who is loving, a father who is compassionate, 
A father, when I turn away, he turns towards me. A father, when I run away, he's there like the prodigal son father. He's there waiting for me to come back. He's a God that is there. He chases me. I'm not only a God chaser, but God chases after his children. God loves his children. There is nothing you can do that will cause the father to stop loving you. That's why David said, where can I go from your presence? If I ascend into the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there, O God. A merciful God, a loving God, a gracious God, a God who is waiting for you with a robe of righteousness, a God who is waiting for you with a covenant ring, a God who is waiting with a fatted calf, his son Jesus. Christ that has been sacrificed for you. This is the God that we serve, not Quibus, but representing. A God who never turns away from us. A God that loves us so much that not even our sin can separate us from Him. Because we have this belief imprinted in our minds that our sin separates us from God. If that was true, how come after Adam sinned, God the Father came for fellowship? When this whole mess started with Adam, the Father came and he knew what was happening. You know why he came? Because he did not even see Adam's sin. You better get this. Because before the foundations of the earth, he already prepared a body for Jesus Christ. He already prepared the sin offering. He already prepared the lamb before the foundation of the earth that would take away the sin of the world. Oh, come on, in Jesus' name. So in the mind of God, Adam, even though he sinned, could not be separated from God. The Bible says we were alienated or enemies in our minds by wicked works from God. It wasn't God who separated himself from us. Every time in the Old Testament, Cain that kills his brother, the father comes to Cain. He murdered his brother. And the father comes and he says, Cain, where is your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? The issue was the father was there. When Jonah ran away from the presence of God, the father was there. When the veil vomited him out on dry land, the father was there again. When that prodigal son came back to the house, although he had squandered his livelihood, the father was there. Listen to me carefully tonight. People talk as if you can lose your salvation in a moment. I meet so many people who think they've committed the unpardonable sin. So many people who believe they've lost their salvation. So many people who challenge the doctrine, once saved, always saved. I have a question, Angelique, David, Chanel, can they ever stop being my children? <laughs> what makes them my children? Their love for me? I loved them long before they were even born. When they were in their mother's womb, I loved them. Little sinners in their mother's womb. They can walk away from me. They can disown me. They can renounce me. But they can never change the fact that they have my DNA. They are my children. They are boss of children. They can marry somebody and have an inferior surname. But they can never lose their identity. Amen. I tell my daughters all the time, don't lose your surname. Don't lose it. Hold on to the Christian surname, boss of. Amen. Get the husband to change his surname. Let's start a new culture in Christian Revival Church. How many ladies say a good amen here tonight? Come on. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. When Jesus became that sin offering, many people teach this incorrectly and say God had to turn away from Jesus so that he could accept us. It sounds great, but it's not a true statement. The Father accepted the Son so He can accept you and me. He accepted the sin offering. He accepted the price. He accepted the blood. The Father was there looking on when His Son was being sacrificed, when His Son became sin and carried your sickness and disease so that the Father can accept you because you are accepted in the Beloved. Are you hearing me tonight in Jesus' name? In the deepest, darkest moment, when Jesus became sin and he descended into the corridors of hell, the Father was watching. The Bible says it pleased the Father 
to sacrifice his son. It wasn't the devil. It was the, although it was the princess of this world, it was God standing by because of his love for humanity. God in his wisdom, the cross, that is foolishness to the world. Foolishness to the devil. Had no understanding of what was happening. The father put his son on that cross. And what a son. What a Jesus. What a savior we have. Come on, if you love him, give him praise. What an obedient son. A son who is God. Come on. A son who was never separated from his father. A son who willingly laid his life down for you and me. A son who went to the cross for you and me. A son who took the cat of nine tails upon his back 39 times for all the major diseases in the world. His flesh popped out of his body. The Bible says he was marred beyond recognition. You could not recognize Jesus as a human being. As he was sacrificed on that cross. Willingly. Because of his love for you. How can you for one moment think after that sacrifice that you can do anything that will make God stop loving you? The Bible says there remains no more sacrifice. There is not another offering. You can stand and jump all day. You can pray 24 days nonstop. You can give all your money. You can have your body burned. You can beat yourself up. But everything you do is not a worthy sacrifice. There is only one worthy sacrifice. And he's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. His name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He's the King of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. And I want you to know tonight, his blood still speaks. Oh, come on, somebody. Give him praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him praise because it feels good tonight. Come on. There in Pretoria, give him praise. Hallelujah. Down there in Cape Town, give him praise. Hallelujah. Because it feels good. Nothing can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I have to believe this. I have to set my heart at ease when I come before the throne of God. Because I don't stand in my righteousness. I stand in His righteousness. I don't stand in my obedience. It doesn't mean I will not obey. Because grace, grace will take you on a path of obedience. I mean, when you see the doctor, he talks about the medicine. A bad doctor just talks about sickness. A good doctor looks at your sickness and talks about the remedy. <laughs> He's the great physician. He doesn't talk about problems. That's why only here and there he mentions sickness. Because in, in the mind of God has been dealt with. He doesn't write in every chapter about sin. The whole, all the epistles of the Apostle Paul focuses only on the remedy. The Christ life. The new identity. Who you are. Because your victory is in your nature. Your victory is in your righteousness. Your completion is in your righteousness, your wholeness. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation, completion, sorteria, salvation, spirit, soul, and body. He talks about what Jesus did for you. The gospel is the power. How many Christians walk around believing that the devil just has the right to do anything? That people go through suffering because they sinned or they open a door rather than gathering at the throne of grace? Praying prayers of faith. They ask the question, what have I done? What did my ancestors do? What sin did I do? Well, judgment comes because of sin. But not your sin. Adam's sin. Death comes because of sin. But not your sin. <laughs> Righteousness comes. Not because of you. So you can work, work, work. You can have your seven steps to righteousness. <laughs> and never live righteous. Never have a revelation. Because your righteousness is rooted in your works. And the Bible clearly says your works of righteousness are as filthy rags. 
You know, when our hearts are not set in righteousness and we don't feel good about ourselves, we don't let other people feel good about themselves. I understand because we had a conversation recently. People say, how come people judge other people? I'll tell you why. Because they judge themselves. People are mean with other people because they mean with themselves. People beat other people up because they beat themselves up all the time. Because their hearts are not established in righteousness. So whenever something happens, they step out of their position. They look for a reason. And they don't believe the gospel. The power of God, listen, unto salvation to everyone who believes. What? The gospel. That the gospel is the power. The gospel has the final say. Not your sin. Not your sickness. Not your disease. The gospel has the final say. And the gospel, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. The solution, the remedy, the answer. And not the son of man. Because in your righteousness is your peace. In your righteousness, His righteousness, which is now your righteousness, is your wholeness, your redemption, your completion, your, 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 your joy in the gospel, in, in your righteousness. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you can't be righteous one moment and less righteous the next. <laughs> you can't believe the gospel one moment and the next moment you don't believe the gospel. You're not righteous sitting in church and tomorrow morning you're a little bit less righteous. You're righteous or you're not. Actually, you're righteous or you're a sinner. One of the two. Which are you? A sinful righteous man. <laughs> Who are you? Huh? Do you believe it? Really? How come you walk around with that condemnation? How come when problems come, you go look for the solutions outside of the gospel? And the gospel is about righteousness. Just a little question. If it's so simple. Paul warns and says, who has beguiled you of the simplicity of the gospel that is in Christ? Galatians, he says, if anyone preaches another gospel, even if it be an angel, let him be accursed. He says that a second time, if anyone preaches another gospel than you've heard, let him be accursed. The gospel of what? The gospel of righteousness. The righteousness of God, not the sin of man. Now, I know when we hear it the first time, it's like, okay, you know, yeah, but we're going to stay on this page for a while till we get people's hearts aligned with what Jesus already did. Till you can sit in front of the throne of God and every lie and deception and every resistance is removed so that you just realize there's an open channel between me and God. Hallelujah. I have favor with God. I am righteous with God. I am accepted by God. Come on, give Him praise tonight. I can receive from the throne of grace because of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm a new person because of Jesus Christ. So let's talk about this quickly. Romans 5 again. I can stay here. I said to them as we flew back today, I can stay in Romans chapter 5 for a year and not even touch the revelation that is in this passage of, uh, in this passage of Scripture. Okay, so are you ready? Romans chapter 5. You ready? Say, I'm ready. We have to get a revy. We have to get a revelation. Amen. Are you ready? Ready, ready or not, here I come. Romans 5 verse 12. The Bible says, therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sin, for until the law sin was in the world, but sin was not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who is to come. But the free gift, everybody say the free gift. It's not like the offense, for if by... One man's offense, many died, much more. Everybody say much more. The grace of God and the gift by grace, the gift being the gift of righteousness, of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. So sin before Christ led to condemnation. Romans 8 verse 1, the Bible now says, There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Because in Christ you cannot be judged. In Christ you are free. 
say, but whilst I have these bad feelings I'm wrestling with. Well, that's exactly that, feelings. And you have to deal with your feelings and your emotions in line with the gospel because your feelings are not true. The gospel is true. Your thoughts of condemnation are not the truth. The word of God is the truth. And if you understand your righteousness, you will live righteous. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. If you see yourself as righteous, you will live righteous. So we don't have to talk about sin. We have to talk about righteousness. Because in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. This is the gospel we are preaching out tonight. How sin came and how life came through that one person, Jesus Christ. For if by the offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one Jesus Christ. Therefore... As through one man's offense, judgment came to all, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Amen. So the law could only point out your sin, but God came and pointed out to the remedy of sin. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, what the law could not do, God did by sending His Son, condemning sin in the flesh. He became the sin offering so that you could live free from sin and the consequences of sin. Amen. I don't want to go too quick. I want you to stay with me. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So what perfects me is not my offering, it's His offering. It's not my obedience, it's his obedience. Are you hearing me? So I'm not a sinner because I sinned. I'm a sinner because of Adam's sin. I'm not righteous because of my obedience. I'm righteous because of his obedience. I'm accepted because of Jesus. Come on, say it tonight. Stay with me. Say I'm accepted because of Jesus. So I need to live righteousness conscious and not sin conscious. Because if I live sin conscious, I will be filled with condemnation. I will be filled with fear. I will not be in a place to receive from God. Because I will wonder, what is the will of God? So when I still believe I can be judged, my heart will be filled with fear. I will not be before the throne of grace in a place of rest and peace to receive. Because there's this nagging thought in my mind. I deserve what I'm getting. And we all know what condemnation and judgment does. It produces fear in the heart of the person. And fear is the opposite of love or faith. So listen what 1 John chapter 4 says, verse 17 to 19. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Hallelujah. So when it's the white throne judgment, where the Christians will not be, but when it's the judgment in heaven, by the way, if you study Revelation, the judgment you will face in heaven is a judgment of reward. It's not a judgment of condemnation. So when you get to heaven, you will not stand before God and He opens a big black book and He says on the 27th of the third month, 1906, you did this. There's not a book of remembrance. Concerning your sins and concerning your flaws. Because our God says, your sins and your iniquities, I will no longer remember. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed your transgressions from us. Come on, say a good amen in Jesus' name. So when you read these flaky books about people that went to hell and heaven, and then they say they saw people who thought they were going to go to heaven in hell. I mean, it's like eventually you think, who, is it so difficult? You read a book and it's not even the Bible about people who say they saw people in hell. And they say you will be shocked when you see the people in hell that you thought would be in heaven. What qualifies you for heaven? Huh? Question. That is a question. What qualifies you for heaven? Answer. I'll say amen. Okay. What qualifies you for heaven? How do you get to heaven? Oh, you can't get to heaven in a minibus. Because a minibus isn't roadworthy. worthy. 
I'll just preach to myself. I have fun up here myself. You can't go to heaven by your good works. It's a big, big mess. How do you get to heaven? How do you get to heaven? What qualifies you? What? Keeping the law obviously never got people to heaven. So what qualifies you? Hello? How do you get to heaven? I want to know how to get to heaven. How do you get to heaven? Nobody can answer me. Jesus, I thought we were a church of salvation. How do you get to heaven? Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. No matter what sin you committed. When you call on the name of the Lord, you are born again. And you become a partaker of His divine nature, the Bible says. 1 Peter 1, 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed by the Word of God that lives and abides forever. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. The Bible says, For He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So Jesus became sin, so I might be righteous. Once I am righteous, I am righteous. I am righteous. I can't become a sinner no more. I can backslide, but I cannot lose my salvation just overnight. Listen to me what I'm saying to you tonight. We have many religious young people here who stand not in the grace of God but by their little religious doctrines. Apostle Paul says, Who bewitched you? Are you saved by faith or by the hearing of the law, by the works of the flesh or by grace? So, what qualifies you for heaven? The grace of God, Ephesians 2. For by grace you have been saved through faith. It is a gift. Do you earn a gift? No. It's free. With a gift, we just read it, comes righteousness. Right standing with God. Meaning when you wake up, you are in right standing with God. When you go to the toilet, you are in right standing with God. When you go to the gym, you are in right standing with God. When you drive your car, you are in right standing with God. Amen. Not less righteous. And as you go over the speed limit, less righteous, less righteous, less righteous, less righteous, less righteous. Like people say, you know, God leaves at 120, the devil leaves at 200 kilometers. Well, my God never leaves. Amen. I'm not saying go over the speed limit. What I am saying is I'm trying to illustrate something here today. That you are righteous because of a gift. It's a gift. You have the gift or you don't have the gift. Full stop. Righteous or not, it's a gift. What makes you righteous? The grace of God. What is the grace of God? Undeserved, unearned, unmerited favor. You are saved by what? Grace. Through faith. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I don't believe this grace and I don't believe, you know, you have to, you have to, you know, you have to, you have to. I live righteous, I live holy. Young people can't get away with what they're doing. This isn't right. Exactly, it's the gospel. It's not right to the eyes of man, but it's right to the eyes of God. And when you see what Jesus did for you, it is your pathway to freedom, your pathway to victory, your pathway to overcoming sin and transgression. Oh, come on in Jesus' name. That's how you get your deliverance. No other way. No other way. God doesn't sit in heaven and if you do things right enough, long enough, it's like a needle that goes needle, 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 you know, and then you mess up, bam, there you go back again. And then you work hard again, you pray, you fast, you do everything you can do, and you're about to hit the jackpot, bam, there you do something wrong. That's how we live. That's how we think. We don't even think we think so, but we think so. So our hearts are never settled. Because we move in our minds in and out. 
of favor with God. And the Bible says you have favor. The Bible says you have been accepted. The Bible says you have been justified. Justified means just as if I had never sinned. He's the just and the justifier of those who put their faith in Jesus Christ. So you put your faith in the works of the flesh or you put your faith in Jesus Christ. Through faith in Jesus Christ, you become just, righteous, amen, sanctified, set apart. So you can go live on an island. You can fast 21 days every month. You can go beat yourself with something on your back every day of your life. You can go so thin we don't see you. You don't move God. God was moved 2,000 years ago. Come on. He, he already decided 2,000 years ago. Amen. Oh, come on. Say amen tonight and, and give him praise if you're getting this tonight. Hallelujah. 2,000 years ago, he accepted you. Because he accepted his son. He cannot reject you because he accepted Jesus. We live in a dispensation called grace. So sin came through one man. Righteousness came through another man. Jesus had to come. Born under the law. To fulfill the law. Judged by the law. To nullify the law. To establish the law of grace. When he walked this earth, he had to be subject to the law. Because the law was still applicable. He was judged by the law. And the, jaw, jaw, the law found him righteous. No sin as a man. So that he could redeem those that were born of sin. Born of the Virgin Mary. But his father, God. Born of the seed of his father, without sin, a, a, a lamb without spot, without blemish. Because the sin nature is transferred through the seed of the man. He had to come, born of a woman under the law. Listen. In order to fulfill the law. To be judged by the law. So that he could annul the law. Old covenant, new covenant. So many of the things you will read in the gospels are still part of the law. Are you hearing me? Ooh. When he died and he rose again. Hallelujah. A new law. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Come on. Grace and truth came through the person of Jesus Christ. Righteousness through the person of Jesus Christ. A partaker of the divine nature through Jesus Christ. Sanctified through Jesus Christ. Holy through Jesus Christ. Let me tell you what is wrong with many Christians. They think wrong. They think as under the law. They think they are sinners. So they still live like sinners. As a man thinketh, so is he. You renew your mind to think the thoughts of God. The Bible says through knowledge you put on true righteousness and holiness. According to the image of him who called you. You are transformed into his image. How? By seeing what Jesus did. The light of the gospel. This is who I am. I am righteous. 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 I'm not a sinner. The things I used to do, I don't want to do anymore because I am righteous in Jesus' name. I'm a partaker of His divine nature. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So in Romans, Paul, uh, Romans chapter 6, Paul says, How can we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer they reign? We're not sinners anymore because we live according to a new law. Not the law that judges and brings condemnation, but we live according to the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that reveals the righteousness of God in your heart.
So when you receive Jesus Christ, you become a partaker of His divine nature. Not a little bit of His nature. 1 John chapter 4, the Bible says, As He is, so are we in this world. Sitting there tonight, no matter what problem you have, you are righteous in the eyes of God. And when you begin to see yourself the way God sees you, you will become a total new person. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All my sins have been forgiven. I am accepted by God. I can come into the before the throne of God to receive grace and mercy in a time of need. The Bible says in Hebrews 10 closing, for by one offering he has forever perfected those who are being sanctified. One offering. He has forever perfected. Forever. That's why you're not perfect today and less perfect tomorrow. He said, but pastor, does that mean I can just go and sin? If you want to. What's going to stop you? The law. The law doesn't stop you speeding. What stops you? Another law. He says in Hebrews 10, a new law I will write upon their hearts. <laughs> So you think we're going to keep young people from, stop them from doing bad things by, by, by bringing boundaries and rules and regulations? Man, if you want to sin, you're going to go sin the five-minute gap you have. You can go sin while the parents sit in the bedroom. If you want to sin, there's a problem with you. You have a nature problem. Huh? Little illustration, not for you. This is now just for you. You can take a beautiful pig, a pink pig, <laughs> and dress that pig in a ballerina suit. Put beautiful little shoes on that pig. Teach that pig to behave. Modify the pig's behavior. Put restrictions in. But the first time that old pig sees a mud puddle, that pig is running right there and is going to go wallow in the mud. Come on. Because the pig is a pig. Hallelujah. Come on. A person that runs to sin all the time is a sinner. Because sin is sin. I mean, when I, when, when, when I was born in a, in a good family, went to church every Sunday, no, I, I never went to class to learn to lie. I just told lies. <laughs> Little boy like this. Angel face. <laughs> Lied. Can you believe it? Why? Because my mother brought a sinner into this world. Although everybody stood there, oh God, a beautiful, beautiful boy. Look at this baby. Sinner. That's why they can be three months old and they throw a tantrum. Uh, eat your food. No. Two years old. Nature is to be a sinner. Steal your mother's money out of the purse. You don't even know why you do it. You just steal the money. I was a little boy. I did it. I don't know why. If there was a time I would go stay, steal some of those coins, put them in my drawer. I couldn't even buy anything. But I was a little thief. A little liar. Right. Because all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Born into sin. I'm a sinner not because of my sin. I'm a sinner because of Adam's sin. The only thing that changes my sin nature is a second birth. I must be born again. The incorruptible seed of the word of God that lives and abides forever. I have to be born again. I need a second birth. Not I become a child of God little by little. I need to be born again. And when you are born again, you become a partaker of his divine nature, which is righteousness. And that's where the focus is of Paul in all the epistles. 
where we talk about the Pauline revelation, Christ in you, your new creation identity. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, I really have to close now. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new and all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself. Hallelujah. Not imputing our sin unto us, but treating us better than we deserve. We are new creatures, not because of what we did. We are new creatures when we accept the gift of righteousness by accepting Jesus Christ, born again. And from that moment, the journey begins. Growth, change, as I sit in the Word of God and I study and discover what God has done for me, I become more and more and more like Jesus. This is the journey of sanctification. You say, but pastor, is there not a consequence for sin? Yes, there is, but not the way you think. Not God judges you or God penalizes you. Of No. If you transgress the law, you may pay a price. A speed cop jumps out and stops you and takes you to prison and has your fingerprints taken. The next minute you're a criminal. But in the mind of God, you are not now suddenly unrighteous. You pay the price for your actions because of human laws. Natural laws. Not the laws of God. Listen. When a guy and a girl sleeps together out of marriage and she falls pregnant, there's forgiveness. But the baby stays. It's not suddenly the baby disappears. Jesus, take the baby away. And if he doesn't, we help him. No. Amen. We respect life. I said we respect life. Come on, all the girls in the house say amen. All the guys in the house say amen. We respect life. Righteous. Righteous. Hallelujah. Righteous. Righteous. Because of Jesus. I pray that something happens in your heart today, tonight, as you sit in this place across the country, as you prepare to come to Dream Week, that something happens in your heart tonight, that you establish that heart of yours in the love of God tonight, and that you settle this once and for all, that you are in right standing with God. And if you've run away from God... He's waiting for you, as we demonstrated here tonight. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you every day of your life. He's waiting for you. He has that robe of righteousness prepared every day of your life. He's waiting for you. You're not waiting for God. He's waiting for you to come back home. Many of you sitting in this place tonight, you have to come back home. Because the path you are going down is a path of destruction. is a path of darkness. is a path of ruin. Tonight you have to come to your senses and look back to the gospel of Jesus. And put your hope and your faith back in what Jesus did for you 2,000 years ago. And not just run down that road and you think, I'm going to be okay. The reality is, my dear friends, sin will always take you down. Jesus will always take you up. And tonight he's the gift with a lift. Come on. Tonight he wants to lift you up. Come on. Tonight he wants to give you peace with God. Hallelujah. Tonight he wants to put a robe of righteousness around you. Tonight he wants to take away your guilt and your shame. So that you can know as a young person, I have peace with the Father. What a wonderful thing to have peace with God. No guilt. No condemnation, no fear, no shame, getting up in bed, <sighs> waking up in the morning, <sighs> praying for three hours, not feeling more righteous. I have peace with God because of Jesus. Do you have peace with God tonight? If you die tonight, do you know that you know you'll go to heaven? Have you wandered away from your father's house? Have you grown cold? Have you lost yourself? That's what life sometimes does to people. They lose themselves. That prodigal son lost himself. The father had the best for him and he chose another life. Sometimes people choose a wrong life, a wrong path. But it's never too late to choose the right path. And tonight, 
Many of you have a decision to make. God says, I put before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Life is Jesus Christ. It's not a journey. It's a person. It's a 